in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, yes, it's in the name of Jesus, that mighty name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. And it's Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, yes, it's in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, yes, it's in the name of Jesus, that mighty name of Jesus. Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name and it's jesus jesus precious jesus we have the victory oh yes it's in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we have the victory Oh, yes, it's in the name of Jesus, that mighty name of Jesus. Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. And it's Jesus Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, yes, it's victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, yes, it's I told Satan, get thee behind. Oh, victory today is mine. Oh, yes, it's joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. Oh, yes, it's I told Satan, get thee behind. Well, it's joy today is mine oh yes his peace is mine peace is mine peace today is mine oh yes it's i told satan get thee behind peace today is mine Oh, yes, it's in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, yes, it's in the name of Jesus, that mighty name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name and it's jesus jesus precious jesus we have the victory hallelujah 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 truly that is the sentiments of our heart here on this evening that's in the name of jesus we have the victory, and we bring you greetings here from Clinton Street, Greater Bethlehem Temple Church, and to those who are present with us in person for our first in-person Bible class in well over a year. 
We say praise the Lord to each and every one of you in person and those of you who are watching on live. And at this time, we ask that you would turn with us to the book of Hebrews for our evening scripture reading. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number four, we'll begin our reading. Hebrews chapter number four. And we'll begin reading at verse 14, and we'll read verses 14, 15, and 16 in your hearing. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 14. And when you get there, you'll find these words recorded. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, and yet without sin. Last verse, verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And truly, we are living in a time of need in this very day an hour. We ask that you continue to remember all of the names that are on our sick and prayer list. We ask that you continue to remember Sister Carol Burke, Sister Alice Clark, Mother Isabel Davis, Sister Ann Hurst, Mother Barbara Price, Sister Louise Ross, Mother Barbara Helton, Minister William Calhoun, Sister Sandra Cole, Sister Evelyn Hill Heron, Sister Minnie Olivia Young, Mother Goldie Simpson, Mother Sophie Roseman, Brother Melvin Shelby, Sister Bernita Hopkins, Sister Shirley Day, Sister Betty Huggins, Brother James Morris, Evangelist Lucille Perry, Sister Naomi Moore, and Brother Dennis and Sister Deborah Carter. We ask that you continue to pray much um, for Sister Marsana Brown and the family in the passing of her only son, uh, Mr. Connolly Smith. Arrangements are still incomplete at this time, but we ask that you continue to keep that family in your prayers. This is the nephew of Trustee Dietrich Brown and the nephew of Brother Isaac Brown. We ask that you continue to keep that entire Brown family in prayer. We also ask special prayer requests, a man for Miss Christine Wade, Sister Virginia Turner, Sister Rebecca Turner, Sister Gladys Taylor, Mr. Nathaniel Upshaw, Miss Leslie, uh, Mr. Randy Calloway, Mr. Stephen Upshaw, Mr. Lionel Wall, Evangelist Aurelia Hall. We ask that you continue to remember Miss Dubonet Botuco. We also ask special prayer for Evangelist Stephanie Harbin and Dr. Sandra Clark. And at this time, any unspoken prayer requests, you can let it be known at this time but the raising of your hand. And let us all stand as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. And at this time, let us all pray. Now, God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness unto us, dear gracious God, in our lives. Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you hear our cries. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you answer our prayers and that you grant our petitions. Father, we ask that you look down upon us, O oh God. Look down upon those who are bereaved at this time. The Brown family, O oh God. Those families, O oh God, who were affected, O oh God, by that tragedy in Texas, Father, with the mass shooting. Father, we ask that you comfort them, for we know that you are the God of all comfort. We even ask, dear gracious God, that you remember those who are sick, oh God, who have pain in their bodies. Father, even those who may not be at 100% health, but who still press their way out here on tonight. Father, we ask that you let your blood cover and let your blood prevail against sickness, disease, illness, and infirmity. We ask, dear gracious God, that you bless us, oh God, even those who are yet pressing their way out here on tonight, those who are watching via live stream, those who are tuned in on the conference line, we ask, dear gracious God, that you bless. Let a word be said, oh God, that will lift us up into higher heights and deeper depths in our relationship with you. Bless the teacher tonight, oh God, move self out of the way, oh God, and bless, oh God, him to speak as of the oracles of you. And we'll thank you for it, oh God, we'll praise you. We'll glorify and magnify your great and your holy name. And let everyone say in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. And at this time, without any further preliminaries, we present unto you the teacher of the hour and the person of Elder Elginon Bartell. Let us receive him by saying amen, amen, and amen.
bless you. Praise the Lord to all the saints. We greet you in that matchless name of Jesus. I'd like to invite your attention to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians. The book of Philippians. Had such an amazing day on yesterday when the devil busy, but we have to stay in the press, stay in the press, simply that's what we want to talk about tonight, stay in the press. I was able to get some rest on yesterday, much needed rest. phone call, had to go meet someone. It was very beneficial. Went back home. Well, I stopped somewhere and looked at the TV. And my heart was just broken. Because of the tragedy in Texas. Before you can turn around, we just left Buffalo. Day was going beautiful. That's just broke. I looked up and it was 15 dead. Fourteen kids and one teacher. And by the end of the night, it was 19. Lord, have to help us. But us that know God, we have to stay in the press. Nothing can deter us. We have to pray for every situation. But we have to realize and understand that we belong to God. And God will take us through. So Philippians, finally my brethren, verse number one, chapter number three. Paul said, finally my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you, <clears throat> to me is indeed not grievous, but it's safe. It's not grievous to me, Paul says. The word of God is redundant. You know, it's redundant. It is. You don't want to eat white bread all the time. No one want to eat the same meal all the time. The only meal that can be eaten or eating all the time is the word of God. Paul said, my word, our spirit and their life. So the word of God is never boring. It never loses its power. So he said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write to you the same things to you indeed is not grievous but for you it is safe it is safe no matter how much we hear the word of God it's safe it's our keeper it holds us it makes us it builds us build it up your most holy faith You can't be successful without God's word. 
You can't go higher in God without God's word. The Bible said we go from faith to faith. And that's consuming the word of God. So Paul writing to this Philippian church, it's not grievous to me. For me to write the same things to you. But for you it is safe. For us it is safe. Say, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concisions. Everybody don't want to see you happy. Everybody don't want to see you say. You know the old saying, misery loves company. The devil is mad because Jesus broke the chains. He's not happy about losing a soul. He already cast his lot. His, 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 his judgment has already been pronounced. His sentence is hell. Eternal damnation. His job is to try to bring everybody with him. But Jesus' job is to offer us life. So he said, beware of the dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ, having no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. No confidence in who we think we are. No confidence in how much money we think we have. No confidence in our education. No confidence in our address. No confidence in the pigmentation of our skin. None. Because the minute you start thinking it's about you, you losing out with God. The very minute you think that you know it all, you losing out with God. When I'm weak, he is strong. Have no confidence in the flesh. None. Paul writes in verse number four, though I might also have confidence in flesh, if any man think if he had where of thee might trust in the flesh, I the more. Paul builds himself up, but then really breaks himself down. He tells you his pedigree, he tells you his background, but he's doing it for a point. He's not bragging. He's showing you how high he got in the earthly system. But he breaks it down and said, didn't mean anything. And we're proud of our children. We're proud of our degrees. We're proud of the money we make. We're proud of the achievement that we ascertain. But if we don't have God, all that means nothing. It means no. I mean, you live good, but if you don't have God, then hell is your portion. You, had, you was educated for this earth, but it means nothing in the eyes of God. The foolishness of men the wisdom of men, if, if the Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And that's if there could be any foolishness of God. He said the foolishness of God is wiser than men. So we can't think that we ascertain something in this life and, 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 and not have God. So what we, the, the subject is stay in the press. Those that God have called out of God. Under this marvel, like those that God have saved and turned their life around, 
It's not easy, but you can make it. It's not an easy road, but you can make it. It's not always going to be sunshine, but you can make it. You have a day like I had yesterday, riding high, and I see the TV program, and it broke me down. But then I realized that God got me. I was moved with compassion about somebody being murdered. It wasn't easy. What took me down that slope, the same thing, brought me up the hill. God said, I got you. Because if we don't be moved by that, then what are we going to be moved by? Weep with those that weep and rejoice with those that rejoice. We can't be so cold and so callous that it doesn't affect us. But we have the answer to their problem. They're meaning the world. We have the answer to the world's problem. So we have to stay in the press. Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any man think of where he might have trust in the flesh, I the more, he gives his pedigree, circumcised the eighth day, from the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, Touching the law of Pharisee concerning the zeal persecuted church. They say Paul said at the foot of Gamaliel. Gamaliel was so heavy in the law of the Torah, they called him the beauty of the law. So Paul said at his foot and gleaned everything from Gamaliel. But he realized something. Now this is the same Paul that was going down the Damascus Road that had letters to bind up anybody calling on the name of Christ. He consented at the death of Stephen. He held the coats of those that stoned Stephen, the Bible says. The same Saul. He wasn't in the press then, but the Bible said light shined brighter than the noonday sun and knocked him off his beast. And the voice says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It says, hard for you to kick against the pricks. The devil can't win. He's already lost. And you can't win not joining with God. You can't. How can you? If the devil is eternally damned, He can't be redeemed. It's too late. He's eternally damned. Those that believe in him or reject God will be in the same situation. It's life and death is in the power of the tongue. They that never see the fruit thereof. You got to make your decision. Make your calling and your lecture. Now, Saul had a decision to make. He didn't hand tie Paul. He didn't make him choose Jesus. He gave him a choice. Say, whom thou, he said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. What would you have me to do? To go down the straight street. It's going to be told what you should do. But did he have to go? No. God didn't hand tie Paul. No one made us be saved. The world beat us up and we chose to come into God's house and thank God we did but we must continue you got to continue you got to stay in the press look what he says from the stock of Israel from the tribe of Benjamin he brother you were touching the law of Pharisee concerning zeal persecuted the church touching the righteousness in the law blameless but what things were gained to me, what things were gained to me, all the education, all the speaking, 14 different languages, sitting at the feet of Gamaliel, having dual citizenship, 
mother was a Roman, father was a Jew. What thing would gain to me? All the pigskins on the wall, the MA, the PhDs, all the accolades that he had achieved through hard work, through knowledge of this world. Look what he says. Those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I caught all things lost, but for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, whom I suffer the loss of all things, and do count them but dung. Nothing. Not even fertilizer. Waste. I wasted my time. I was somebody in a synagogue. But he became nobody. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God that dwell in the tents of the wicked. So Paul said, I became nothing. I, became, I lost everything but for Christ. Because there's a press that have redeemed me. There's a press that I'm reaching for. There's a press that I have to keep ahead of me. That's why I said it's not grievous me to write this, you Philippian church. It's not grievous, but for you, it's safe. Trying to keep everybody safe, and the only thing that's going to be that keeps us safe is what? God's word. That's it. That's the only thing that keeps us safe is God's word. For the excellence of knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, whom I suffer loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I might, why are you doing it, Paul? That I might win Christ, and being found in him, being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is in the law. My own righteousness, which is in the law. He's speaking from a Jewish term now. His Jewish side of the family, which is in the law. Law was given to Moses. He was a descendant of Moses. Out of the three dispensations, the first dispensation was the conscience. From Adam unto Moses, God dealt with the conscience. From Moses to Christ, he dealt with the law. Law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So this is what he said. He said, by the law and being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that is with through faith of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God, by faith. Talk about staying in the press. Stay in the press. God, who, who you have redeemed, it gets hard. But when I'm weak, then am I strong? Because you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it outside of God. Let that a man think he stand, take heed, lest he what? Lest he fall. He that think of himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceived himself. Being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. But that which is through faith of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God by faith. That I may know him, listen to this, that I may know him. To know him does take sacrifice. To know him, you have to deny yourself. To know him, you got to say, Lord, not my will, but let thine will be done. Jesus denied himself. In Gethsemane, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, let thine will be done. We all have a will. We're not robots. We're free will creatures. We're homo sapiens. That just means we're human. God gives us a will. 
choice. I said before your life and death, you choose. That I may win Christ and be found in not having my own righteousness, which is the law. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection. This way, the opposite flip coin of the present. Everybody want to know him in the power of his resurrection. Because we sing the song, he got up from the grave. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Whatever tomorrow brings, because he lived, I can face it. The resurrection brings us joy. It brings us peace. The peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. David said, Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man there is peace. Isaiah said, Great peace have they who love thy Lord. Nothing shall offend them. My peace, Jesus said, I leave under you not as the world, even that's the power of the resurrection. Joy. Unspeakable. He wasn't talking about the organ. Just the truth of God's word. Joy is a result of the power of the resurrection. David said this. What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits unto me? I'll take the cup of salvation. What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits unto me? Surely I'll take the cup of salvation and I'll pay my vow in the presence of all of his people. That's the power of the resurrection. You denied yourself, we joined with Christ, and now we're receiving these fringe benefits of the power of the resurrection. Because he got up, I can live. Because he got up, I got joy. Because he got up, I got peace. Because he got up, I'm saved. Because he got up, he makes a way out of nowhere. Because he got up, he opened doors. But he's talking to the Philippian church. That I may know him in the power. You know, we sing it in testimony. Some of us sing it. I know him in the power of his resurrection. Everybody wants of his resurrection because we're in the press. But there's a common. Common means continue on. Is that correct? Now we have some teachers in here. That's what a common means. Dr. Clark, is that what a common means? Yes. A common, that means to continue on. It means to continue on. I know him in the power of his resurrection. Do you want to continue on? And the fellowship. Can't just, you can't just know him in the power of the resurrection, but in the fellowship of his suffering. You don't get one without the other. We were just happy about having peace and joy and calling him a healer, a way maker, a heart fixer, a burden bearer because we knew him in the power of his resurrection. But the comment said, continue on and in the fellowship of his suffering. Paul's right there. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go? Surely there must be a cross for me. Remember what James and John mother asked Jesus. Say, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, can my son sit one on the right hand and one on the left? She was sincere. When you come into your kingdom, can John sit on the right hand 
and James on the left or left or right, whichever way you see fit Jesus can. Jesus said, it's not mine to give. It's not mine to give. But he also said, can they drink from the cup that I'm able to drink from? And that's the question, God. Can we drink from the cup that he's able to drink from? Because we got to stay in the press. When it's good, we got to be in the press. Amazing day. All day till 6 02. No, 6 32. I had an amazing day until 6 32 yesterday. And what brought me down looking at the TV? About them people being killed. But that's a part. Jesus went to Lazarus' grave and he wept. He wept at Lazarus' grave. Because he could be touched. He could be touched. So he asked Mary's mother, he asked the mother, he said, can they drink from the cup that I'm able to drink from? What's in the cup? The power of the resurrection is in the cup. Deliverance is in the cup. Joy is in the cup. Healing is in the cup. Peace is in the cup. But disappointment is in there also. Pain is in there also. Hurt is in there also. Sadness is in there also. Because this is the power of the resurrection and continue on the fellowship of his suffering. So this is Paul writing to this Philippian church. We're going to be all right, but you have to press. You have to stay in the press. It's always not going to be sunny. There's going to be some rainy days. There's going to be some cloudy days. There's going to be some blizzards. There's going to be some hurricanes. There's going to be some storms. But you got to stay in the press. And the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might obtain unto the resurrection of the dead. Look what he says. Not as though not as though Paul said. I had already obtained, either am already perfect. But I follow after that, that I might apprehend, oh Lord Jesus. Help us, Holy Ghost. Look what he says. Paul said, not as though I've already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that, I might apprehend that which I'm also apprehended of Christ Jesus. He said, if I could grab him, like he has grabbed me. If I can love him like he loved me. Jesus said, no man can pluck you out of my hand and my father's what greater than I. Say, no man can pluck you out of my hand and my father is greater than I. So he said, if I can apprehend Christ like Christ have me apprehended, we'll be all right. If I can love him like he loved me, we'll be all right. If I can trust him, like he trusts me, we'll be all right. Stay in the press. But I count myself not to apprehend. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, Reaching forth unto those things which are before. I 
press. Stay in the press. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's a press. He didn't say I press toward the mark when everything is going well. Or I press toward the mark when everything is feeling good in my body. Or I press to the mark when my finances are great. Or I press toward the mark when I got good grades. No, I press towards the mark. How? Always. Regardless. God doesn't need any fair weather saints. When it's good, I'll serve it. When it's bad, I'll walk away. No, God doesn't need that. There's a mark that we have to get to. There's a press regardless of whether we feel good or feel bad. Have money or don't have money. Like the situation we're in or don't like the situation we're in. Feel good in our body or don't feel good in our body. He's looking for us to press. He's looking for us to stay in the fight. You can't quit. We come too far. He brought us too far. Gave us the victory. He's telling us and reiterating this to the Philippian church. It's not grievous for me, Paul said, but for you it's safe. The word of God is safe. That's why we come to Bible class, because it's safe. That's why we come to Sunday school, because it's safe. That's why we go to Sunday morning, because it's safe. The, door, the, the devil is as a worn lion, seeking whom he may devour. The only thing we have to fight with is what? The Sunday school lesson told us what is this past Sunday is for the weapons of our warfare. They're not carnal. But they mighty to God for the pulling down of the strongholds of the devil. Our arsenal is old as Jesus. We don't have any new weapons. Our weapons are old as Jesus. The same thing Jesus fought with, that's what we have to fight with. If thou be the son of God, turn these stones into bread, he said. For it is written. It didn't come out of new. He went back to the law. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Take him into a high mountain to party. If thou be the son of God, fall down and you give his angels charge over thee. It is written, look, man should not, the Lord should not tempt the Lord thy God. He fought the devil with the word, and that's the only thing we have to fight the devil with is with the word of God. It's quick. It's powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing and divided the sun and the soul and the spirit, the joint and the mouth, the center, the very thought and intent of the heart. Jeremiah says it's like a hammer that breaks the rocks into pieces. That's our armor. Later on, Paul talking about Philippians putting on the whole armor of God. It's always the word. It's always the word. It's always the word that's going to get us through. It's always the word that's going to soothe us. It's always the word that's going to hold us. It's always the word that's going to take us through that journey where we need to go. It's the word that's going to keep us on that path of pressing. Paul said, I press toward the It's a mark. It's a prize. And it's a high calling of God. Where? In Christ Jesus. So it's not grievous to me, Philippians. It's safe. We know the song says the safest place in the whole wide world is where in the will of God. And the only way we can know the will of God is in his word. For us, Google is really for the world. It's not for us. The Holy Ghost is greater than Google. The Bible says he'll bring all things back to your remembrance, right? If you eat the word, when the Holy Ghost comes, it'll deliver the word back to you. But you have to eat the word. If you don't eat the word, the Holy Ghost is not going to put the word in there for you. You have to study the word and the Holy Ghost to bring all things back to your remembering. That's why it's imperative. Like I said, this is only my theory. This is not biblical. This is nobody. This is mine. 
60, 30, 10. 10, 30, 60. 30, 10, 60, 60, 30, 10. I don't care how you slice it, 100. And I believe 60% of the knowledge that I've learned was in Sunday school. Through the convention, when we couldn't get here, my mother used to make us go down to the church on the corner for vacation Bible school. Sunday school, and I tell you what, you get a book, you get a book, everybody get a book. You got seven days to study that lesson. Now, nobody came here tonight and knew what I was going to teach. We're going through the scriptures tonight, so we learned it from that. So we're learning this one day, this one hour period that we're teaching, you know the lesson because I actually turned to it. But think about Sunday school. From Sunday to Sunday, you got a book, you get seven days to study that lesson every Sunday. David, Hebrew boys, Shadrach and Meshach, in the lion's den, Daniel, I learned that in Sunday school. It's impaired. The Bishop Clark used to always say the statistic that 95% of the people in jail didn't come to Sunday school. So I think that's 60% of our knowledge, Sunday school. And 30% is Bible class. And then 10% is the preach word because the preacher is preaching to those that's in the church and those that's out the church. So you're there to hear that 10 message. But Sunday school is so imperative because you get a week. If you got a big exam in school, you're going to study all week to try to pass that test. Just think, we get a whole week to just study. Then you get to ask questions, you get to ask questions, you get to ask questions. Everybody on the same page. But it's imperative because when the Holy Ghost kick in, Holy Ghost is not going to read nothing. It's not going to give you nothing that you don't know. It's not. The Holy Ghost is going to only activate what you put in you. You are what you eat. You don't eat anything. The Holy Ghost, it, it feeds off the word. That's what the Holy Ghost feeds off. They're, they are inseparable. You, you know God in the words is, is inseparable, right? So the Holy Ghost feeds off the word, so you have to put it in you. Then he said, I'll bring all things back to your remembrance, the word of God. So Paul is saying here now, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many be perfect and thus minded. And if any of you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already obtained, let us walk by the same rule. And let us mind the same thing. That's why I said this. It's only one church. church. One spirit, one church. I don't see read. Really, maybe that's in another the 66 books. Maybe it's the 67 one. It's not here. I don't know if somebody be talking about the black church. Where's the black church at? Oh, it's in the chapter of never and on page don't exist. You're not going to put God in a box. You're not going to put it. There's no black church, no white church, no Chinese church, no Jewish church. There's one church that neither male nor female, bond nor free, Jew nor Gentile, but we all want one in what Christ sees. There ain't but one church. Don't let the devil put you in that box. Paul says, let us all be thus minded that we are in this press. This is a press. This is a pressing way. It's the devil's job to try to stop us. And it's our job to lean on Christ so we can make it. Because you can't do it without him. You can't do it without him. You can't do it without him. Nevertheless, where to already obtain, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brother, be follow of me and mark them which walk as we also in an example. For as many of whom I have often told, now telling you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross. Who 
end of destruction, who God is their belly, and the glory of their shame, who mind earthly things, our conversations in heaven, from whence we look to our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, to whom shall change our vile bodies and fasten like unto his glorious body, that according to the work and whereby we are able to subdue all things. Amen. We'd like to thank each and every one of you who have joined us, Facebook, YouTube, or listening on the conference line. Please remember the words of John. As the Father have loved me, so I have loved you. Continue you in my words. Remember to show the love of Jesus to someone you come in contact with on this week. Now on next Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m., the same platform, we say good night and God bless.